Welcome to Module 7. In this part of the course, we'll introduce you to the concept of forced browsing. Forced browsing is not technically a vulnerability, nor an attack. The term is simply descriptive of a situation where a user doesn't browse through web application resources by clicking URLs, but accesses content by manual identification of resources and may gain access to restricted parts of a service. Imagine a company that sends client emails linking to a page containing sensitive data like the client's personal information, account balance, and so on. This could look something like this. What's immediately striking is the identifier contained in the path. It's a numerical value and could easily be substituted for another parameter. As you can see, changing this parameter will display private information of another client. This could constitute a breach of the Personal Data Protection Act or lead to the leaking of valuable personal data of the company's clients. Another instance of forced browsing is the identification of vital service directories which store libraries, configuration files, and other files used to dynamically generate content. These files should be restricted from final users, as accessing them could lead to errors that result in leaking sensitive data or the script acting autonomously in ways that were not provided for by the application developer. If access to these files is not authorized in any way, forced browsing may also constitute an example of data hiding. Web developers want to restrict users from accessing files, but don't use any other methods of preventing this. In the case of web applications, developers often use common directory names to store service files. An example of such a directory is lib, which could contain library classes or full libraries used by a web application. Another directory is classes. You can also see here unsecured files, which, in isolation, could lead to displaying errors. Other examples are include and includes. The include directory doesn't exist in the service, but you can access the includes directory, which often contains configuration files. If the data is stored in a file whose extension is not linked to any interpreter, or the data is contained in any or XML files, a user may be able to see the contents of the file and, for example, discover database credentials. Since the consequences of forced browsing could be very serious, you need to remember that while building a web application, you should never simply assume a visitor won't be able to access certain parts of the service. All directories have to be secured, and directories containing data which is only used server-side should be located outside the web server or blocked in an htaccess file. You also need to remember that incorrect file extensions could lead to the leaking of crucial data, like configurations or service source code. Finally, while displaying data to restricted groups of users, don't solely rely on line-generated identification numbers. It might be a better idea to use hash functions to generate less predictable identifiers. Better yet, be sure to implement cutting-edge authorization mechanisms in your application. That's all in Module 7. Thanks for your attention and see you in the next module, which will focus on path traversal attacks.